Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It's the fifth Sunday of Easter. It is May 7th, year of our Lord, 2023. Joyous day today. It was also Confirmation Sunday. Uh, always a, uh, just, a, just a great day. Um, it's always a great day when we gather and receive the gifts of our Lord, but just Confirmation makes it that much more special to see God being faithful to his promises in these young people's lives and then them standing before the community and confessing the faith. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And once again, according to the daily lectionary, we turn to Leviticus. Tonight we read from chapter 20. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Say to the people of Israel, Any one of the people of Israel or of the strangers who sojourn in Israel, who gives any of his children to Molech, shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. I myself will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people, because he has given one of his children to Molech, to make my sanctuary unclean and to profane my holy name. And if the people of the land do at all close their eyes to the man when he gives one of his children to Molech and do not put him to death, then I will set my face against that man and against his clan and will cut them off from the, among their people, him and all who follow him, and whoring after Molech. If a person turns to mediums and necromancers, whoring after them, I will set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. Keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. For anyone who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother. His blood is upon him. If a man commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. If a man lies with his father's wife, he has uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. If a man lies with his daughter-in-law, both of them shall surely be put to death. They have committed perversion. Their blood is upon them. If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. If a man takes a woman and her mother also, it is depravity, and they shall be burned with fire, that there may be no depravity among you. If a man lies with an animal, he shall surely be put to death, and you shall kill the animal. If a woman approaches any animal and lies with it, you shall kill the woman and the animal. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. You shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my rules and do them, that the land where I am bringing you to live may not vomit you out. And you shall not walk in the customs of the nations that I am driving out before you, for they did all these things, and therefore I detested them. But I have said to you, you shall inherit their land, and I will give it to you to possess a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, who has separated you from the peoples. You shall therefore separate the clean beast from the unclean, and the unclean bird from the clean. You shall not make yourselves detestable by beast or by bird or by anything with which the ground crawls which I have set apart for you to hold unclean. You shall be holy to me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have separated you from the peoples, that you should be mine. A man or a woman who is a medium or a necromancer shall surely be put to death. They shall be stoned with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. And that is the word of the Lord. And that is a very harsh word of the Lord, but a very important word of the Lord. Now, remember that. This is God's word. You may not like it, and unfortunately, there are many in the culture around us. Unfortunately, there are many in the church or people who profess to be in the church that don't like what I just read. Well, it is God's word. It is God's word. Now, one of the things I want you to think about, first of all, is the Sermon on the Mount, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is 
Matthew 5, 6, and 7, that great sermon. And it begins, as we know, with the Beatitudes. In fact, maybe I'll flip to it very quickly. It begins with the Beatitudes, the blessing. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, and it goes on from there. And there's a number of those beautiful Beatitudes. And then it gets, you know, that, that's the door that we walk into what God has done for us. Uh, that we are, we are blessed because we are nothing before God and he gives us everything. Everything we are, everything we have, everything we hope for comes from him. The promise of everlasting life, the promise that our sin is forgiven, uh, the, the, and we know it is, because uh, the promise of everything our baptism brings. So we start with those Beatitudes, and then he says this, you are the salt of the earth. And it, 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 you, it, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown or trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, so let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And it goes on from there. And he talks about the things that are in a, in a broad brush, but the things that, that are being spoken of in Leviticus. It's the same God saying, saying these things. And you think about this New Testament, because people will think, yeah, well, you know, Jesus doesn't talk that way. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And he understands that the people who are hearing him heard Leviticus. They, they understood that law. We don't read from it so much in the New Testament church, particularly in our lectionary, that it comes up in the day lectionary. That's why I'm wanting, wanting to read it to you now. But uh, we forget that, you know, what we are in God and that we are required, um, he would have us because of God living in us, because we are sanctified in him, that we are his people to go out and be the salt and the light. Uh, let's go back to Leviticus. So, God is warning these people, you know, they're going out into a world just like we do. We are sent out in the world in our various vocations, and who knows what goes on. You know, they were surrounded, the, the ancient people, our ancient forebears, with people who did sacrifice their children to Molech, and they would end up doing that as well, killing hundreds, who knows how many children, and it was a horrible way for anybody to die, let alone an, an infant or a child. You heated up this bronze statue, and you just laid the baby in its arms. Now, I don't know if the baby was killed ahead of time or not, but it's like, oh my gosh, the depravity of people uh, when we are left to our own devices, when we don't have this outside influence, God coming and saying, knock it off, this is what I would have you be. This is what we do. I mean, think about it now as people turn their back on God, they can call themselves whatever they want, they can call themselves Christian, whatever. They're opening themselves to, to all these things. And these are the things we never talk about in our culture. Like what these lifestyles, what this depravity does, the diseases that it lets in. Um, now, if memory serves me correctly, that AIDS entered the human bloodstream through monkeys. And I think that's been traced very well, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, that's not unknown. Uh, and what a what, how did it devastate communities? You know, just this horrible thing. Uh, and then you know, other diseases that are transmitted because of a misuse of the body. Uh, and other things happen. It's, it's just death. There's just death there. And God says, you're not going to be like these people who are under the control of darkness. You are people of light. You are, you are my people. You are holy. And I am going to be holy among you. And I am going to, you know, it doesn't do our neighbor any good if we think, oh, because these things are hard for us to swallow in our culture. They wish they wouldn't be. Would that they, we would just wake up as God's people and say, yes. Amen to what God says. But no, we waffle, we get scared, we think the church isn't going to grow. So what? Cling to the truth. Cling to the truth. If it doesn't grow, it doesn't grow. That's God's issue, not ours. We proclaim his word in its entirety. And sometimes it's hard to hear, but think about loving your neighbor. It doesn't do my neighbor any good if I don't tell them the truth. If I am not the salt and the light. I'm, as our Lord says, I am good for nothing. Thrown out, trampled on. That's all I'm, I'm, I'm good for. That's all I'm good for. We're talking about this in youth group tonight. We're finishing up for the year about, you know, the situations. That, and these are young men and women and the situations they're going to face that I never did. Like, what do you do when you're invited to a gay wedding? And what do you do when, um, you know, you're the head of a household and, uh, 
uh, your friends or family members come over and they're living together and not married, you know, what do you do when they come and in, in, in stay in your house? And we talked at length about that, about what it means to love and what it means to, to speak the truth, even though sometimes it might end a friendship. Now, there's ways to do that lovingly. And also, you know, you can turn it around, too. We talked a little bit about this. You know, why, if you have a good friend that's inviting you to do something they know you as a Christian really can't support and really can't give your blessing to, you know, why would they invite you to that? Why would they, 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 you as their friend, why would they put you in a position to turn your back on what you believe? Um, you know, so that it's a two way street there, but you worried about us. So anyway, God is, what God is teaching very harshly, and very strongly here in, in Leviticus is that you need to be holy. You can't let these horrible cultures around you, and man, they, if you read the things that happened in the ancient world, um, when battles were won, when battles were lost, I'm thinking of the uh, North Africans who, uh, when they lost battles, the nobility would come, go and kill their children, thinking somehow that would appease the gods. You think about, uh, in, in maybe a little more recent history, I mean, still ancient, but in our country, you know, we, we forget about this, how in our in our in our half of the world, our hemisphere, you know, the 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 the, uh, the uh, native sacrifices that happen in you know Mexico and and uh, and uh, in Central and South America, you know, people's hearts, beating hearts, ripped out of their chest, and these just like blood, and horrible blood sacrifices that I won't go into detail. You know, God says you're not going to be like them. You're going to be holy. You're going to come in with life. Now it seems harsh because God's saying, yeah, you know, stone them. But the problem is now it's also interesting that that. God's people hardly ever really acted on this the way God, you know, writes it here. He probably understands that, you know, it's just me guessing there. But um, anyway, the point God is making is he is holy and he wants us to go out and, and share that holiness with others, not the other way around. Unfortunately, there's too much of the other way around happening. It's like, like I said, the temptation, oh, we got to appease the world in order to grow in order to be popular, in order to have people to want to come to our church. I don't know where it says that here. Yes, I want the church to grow. So do you. And so does God. But he doesn't ever give us the authority to waffle on the truth. It, what is repentance if you don't understand how fallen you are? If you don't understand that, that the desires of your own heart are often you know, 180 degrees out, opposed to what God would have you do. And then when you look back and examine, you think, yeah, I left this trail of destruction behind me. Might not even be sexual sins. It's other things. Broken friendships. You know, good friendships that you had, had as children and young men and women destroyed because, you know, you you were sinful and you, you just couldn't stop thinking of yourself. Um, all these things that, that we need a Savior for. So anyway, very interesting, these these this section of Leviticus that people want to dismiss readily. It's like, don't do that. You know, God is saying, remember, Jesus doesn't give us the authority to, to, to uh, uh, um, dismiss these. There are certain things we can, and he tells us that, like, you know, the food code and stuff like that, the kosher laws, but not these things. You know, and this, this is not only what he says, what I just read for you, and he goes on in the Sermon on the Mount, but also Romans, St. Paul, um, comes up in Revelation again from our Lord's mouth. Uh, it, it is, you know, we are required he needs us, and he'll find somebody else to do it if we want. He'll, he'll get us out of the picture, uh, and that won't be pleasant if we refuse to do it. it you know, it's a real gut check now, my brothers and sisters, in these dark and latter days to stand firm, to stand firm, take our lumps like those who've came before us in the faith, and many have taken some, you know, if you look back at the history of the church, many people have suffered greatly but have received the crown of life. You know what you are in Christ. You know what he has made you, heir to everlasting life, um, an heir. Uh, you are, uh, uh, all the glories of, of the life to come await you. And God himself will wipe the tears from your eyes. Stand firm. Stand, cling to his word, what he says. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. And uh, trust in what he has told you. That's all we have, and that's all we need. Let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Having received the great gift of Jesus Christ this day, the forgiveness for our many sins, and the nourishing food, the, the, the food of everlasting life, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed sacrament, having been strengthened by these today, pray that we'd be people of joy in these dark and latter days as we go about our various vocations throughout the week. I ask you to be with confirmands uh, here and throughout uh, your church. Bless them as they now confess before not only your church but the world, uh, uh, what you have done for them, who you are, and the blessings that you hold out before all. Heavenly Father, be with those who are crying out to you, especially Myron, Dennis, Dave, Don, Ardo, Klaus, Elena, my brother in office, Dale, the dear friends of our congregation, Liberty, Dave, Anita, Dee, John, Jason, Camden, Ashley, Paul, Eric, Deb, Steve, Ronnie, Jeremy, Don, Beth, Clint, Tom, Jim, Bob, Josiah, Katie, Heather, Bert, Marlis, Joe, Phil, Dylan, Jeff, Christy, Brad, Scott, Amy, George, and all who cry out to you. Place your hand upon them, keeping them ever mindful of your love. Be with those who care for them, that they might be your instruments for their well-being. Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for the family of our dear friend and brother in Christ, Jason, who will be laid to rest this week. Pray that you'd bless them with your peace and keep them and all of us um, hopeful as we look forward to that wonderful day where we will be reunited with all those who have gone before us in the faith. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank you, my Heavenly Father. Through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. With your hands, I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to sing um, this wonderful Latin hymn comes somewhere from... Uh, the second half of the first millennium, and uh, we sang it at the Lord's Supper today. Maybe we sang it as an opening, and I can't remember. Uh, at the Lamb's High Feast, we sing. 633. At the Lamb's High Feast, we sing. Praise to our victorious King, who has washed us in the tide flowing from his pierced side. Alleluia! Praise we him whose love divine gives his sacred blood for wine, gives his body for the feast, Christ the victim, Christ the priest. Alleluia! Where the paschal blood is poured, death's dread angel sheaths the sword. Israel host triumphant go through the wave that drowns the foe. Hallelujah. Praise we Christ whose blood was shed, paschal victim, paschal bread. With sincerity and love, eat we manna from above. Alleluia. 
That's stanzas one through four, and there are eight all together in that beautiful hymn. Again, that's 633, At the Lamb's High Feast We Sing. My brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed rest by God's grace. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.